of Wrath. Yes, it's Hero Quest time again, because if you hadn't heard, classic board game Hero Quest has been reissued. Well, I say reissued, not in the sense of a close facsimile, but a sort of entirely redesigned version. Well, I say redesigned visually redesigned, but the actual rules are pretty much the same. We shall get into that later, because we quickly have to explain HeroQuest to the uninitiated. So, as you can see from this box, with its rather beautiful Les Edwards artwork, it's high adventure in a world of magic. And the best thing about HeroQuest is the Bardic Broadcast video. Have, have a look in the description, there's a link for it there. If you haven't seen it, you need to watch it before anything else. It's one of the best things on YouTube. Anyway, as you can tell from the corner here, Ages 9 to adult, 2 to 5 players, and clear step-by-step -step rules. Yep, ages 9 and up with clear step-by-step -step rules. It's a dungeon crawler game for the kids, basically, to sort of ease them into the world of um, going down a load of steps and smacking a load of orcs with a big hammer in order to complete your quest and vanquish evil and get gold and all that kind of stuff. It was a kind of a cross-venture between Milton Bradley Games, or MB Games in the corner there, who are probably now part of Hasbro, everybody else is, and uh, with Games Workshop, which is generally called Warhammer now, but uh, it was Games Workshop as it was. And, well, the idea was, I think, really to get kids into all the um, Games Workshop stuff going forward. To tell you what, it wasn't unsuccessful, because it is a really fun game. It's a very simple, uh, don't get me wrong, if you didn't grow up with this and you haven't got the nostalgia for it and you're not quite young, uh, you may find this a bit too simple and it can get repetitive and all that kind of stuff, but the fact remains, Hero Quest is a pretty great game, and it's just really nice to have something fun like this the whole family can play, as long as they're nine years old or over. Or maybe younger kids, if they're fairly into this sort of thing. You know how it goes. Now, when this came out in 1989, it was the biggest thing in the bloody world, or at least it was for us. Um, it was like one of the big Christmas toys um, for boys at the very least, and oh yeah, we were absolutely crazy into this. We played it for years, me and my mate Phil mostly. Um, in fact, we sort of kept playing it until they brought out Advanced Hero Quest, if I remember, then we played that. Um, that's a story for another day, though. And it wasn't the only one. Uh, the almighty Warhammer people at the Games Workshop also um, got together with Milton Bradley and did a sort of follow-up set in space in the future, a kind of space hulk for kids called Space Crusade, or Star Quest, I believe in some territories. And that, again, is a story for another day. But that is very, very steeped in Warhammer 40k lore and stuff like that, whereas Hero Quest kind of stands on its own, which is why I think they have been able to reproduce it. But anyway, before we get too far into this, I should briefly explain the joys of Hero Quest to the uninitiated. So how did Hero Quest work then? Well, there was a board, a big old board, none of these modular systems here. Basically for different quests, different parts of it were sort of sectioned off and all doors were in different places, so you never quite knew where you were going and had to search out, as you should do in a dungeon explorer game. But you also knew exactly how much space it was going to take up on the table. Obviously, it's on a board. And the thing about Hero Quest was, it's incredibly visual and tactile. This is what a game of Hero Quest looks like when it's running. You have miniatures for nearly everything. Distinct miniatures, loads of little um, goblins and orcs and chaos warriors and goodness knows what. You've got loads of furniture pieces, which do nothing except add character and atmosphere. Um, you've got your little doors which go in between things. You've even got cool looking dice. Oh, look at that. So basically the way combat works is you have to roll skulls to do damage and your mighty shield here will protect you. And there is an evil shield for protecting the enemies because the enemies are rubbish at defending and you're pretty good at it. That's the way this works in order to keep it fairly easy. It's just super good fun. As mentioned earlier, you can pick one of four different character archetypes. The Barbarian. Out of the way, dice. The Barbarian is here. Hang on, we should zoom in, actually. There we are. The Barbarian, the Dwarf, the Elf, and the Wizard. All your cool crew for giving a good old slap to the Eviltons. And, of course, they have the almighty character cards to tell you what they're like. The Barbarian, he's big and strong. He hits things with a sword. The Dwarf, he's short, but he's strong, and he hits things with an axe, and he can, um... What does he do? He removes traps. Remember, yes, you may remove any visible trap in the same room or passage. The Wizard, he casts spells and stuff, and the Elf can hit things with a sword and also cast some spells, but not as many as the Wizard. Word of warning, though, in Hero Quest, spells eh, aren't that great, and the Wizard's a bit weaker as a result, if I recall correctly. Maybe 
your mileage varied, but we were never particularly impressed by the Magic users whilst playing it. A lot of the game is controlled by cards. You've got cards here which tell you how strong all the different um, mighty enemies are. Chaos Warrior, move six squares, attack three dice, defend four dice, body one, mind three, and nice artwork, of course. Um, you've got uh, artefacts, you can buy in shops and stuff. You've got your spell cards. Send an orc to sleep! Why the devil not? Um, you've also got all your equipment, more stuff you can... Oh, that's the stuff you buy in the shops, I'm sorry. The artefacts you have to find during the quest, of course. Buy yourself a spear, why not? The new version doesn't have a spear in it, which I find odd, because one of the expansion bits for it um, has a spear that you get as equipment, and, like, you don't know what you're supposed to do with it, because there are no rules for the spear in the new one. Anyway, that's just me wibbling about something. Um, there's treasure, and, of course, more treasure, and, of course, even more treasure. It's a dungeon crawler game. That's what it's all about. Potions of healing, wandering monster, heroic brew. Uh, that's a, a very, very iconic one for the hero quest crowd there. Um, yeah. But how? You screech at me from a storm drain. Do you know how the levels are set out? Well, you got your quest book, didn't you? Here it is. Look, it's a quest book. It's got the nice cover art on again. Thank you, Les Edwards. Uh, basically, there you go tells you where everything is set up and obviously this is just for the evil wizard player who is the dungeon master effectively they know where it all is the heroes will go through and search and look and all that kind of stuff and underneath there we are there's all your notes and all your flavor text and all your everything and that is it that is it for each quest you have two pages because that is all you need in hero quest it's simple it's there to get you started there is of course an entire rule book it's not exactly huge, you can easily understand it, and uh, covers all eventualities if I remember. I don't ever recall playing Hero Quest and thinking, what happens now? It was always pretty clear from what I can recall. And a jump cut, because I really wanted to show you a character sheet. This is where you would write your name, your character's name, their mind points and body points. The body points would quickly uh, overfill this area. Tasks completed, that doesn't mean a whole lot. And you could draw a heraldic shield and a motto for your character. See, that's all you needed. No other stats other than their mind points and their body points. And away you went, and my god, what fun we had. Smashing orcs, destroying mummies, going after the Witch Lord and having to find the Spirit Blades to kill the Witch Lord, and, of course, fearing the ultimate enemy, the dreaded Gargoyle. Dun-dun-dun-dun! It's a big, lethal thing. It appears to be a statue of a greater demon of corn, I think, from Warhammer. Or, well, Old Hammer, as they'd probably call it these days, because Warhammer had a weird refresh in order to allow them to get more registered trademarks or something. I don't know. I didn't keep up with it. These, as you will actually have noticed, if you are a person who notices such things, are very much in the Old Hammer vein. Heck, do you want to see one of the orcs? That's got to be the most old-school Games Workshop design orc you will ever see in your life. Ah, that's the stuff. And, as I said, you got a lot of miniatures with Hero Quest. Um, they were all kind of the same, though. I mean, the orcs and the goblins, you had them with different weapons, but the actual sculpts of the rest of the miniatures were all identical. But hey, you can still have big armies with a little bit of differentiation in, so it was all nice and good. Oh, and you know what else we got? 2d6. Do you know what you got those for? Moving. <laughs> True to very board game roots. The characters didn't have a movement allowance. You literally roll two dice at the start. Ah, I've got a five and a three. That's eight. I can move eight squares this turn. So sometimes in a turn you can only move two squares, and sometimes you could move twelve. And I'll tell you what else there was a lot of in Hero Quest. Searching for bloody secret doors. Oh, that was a very important thing. But overall, Hero Quest, pretty bloody great. But of course, time's moved on. Many expansions were released for Hero Quest to cash in on the ongoing phrase, but yeah, it went away and it never surfaced again. And due to the way you basically Games Workshop and Hasbro weren't playing ball, it seemed like Hero Quest and Space Crusade were gone forever. Then, I think Hasbro realised that, do you know what? There's not actually a whole lot in here which uh, sort of ties into the Warhammer mythos. Could we just have all the art redone, remove everything that's a little bit too Warhammer-y, <laughs> and make a new version of Hero Quest? The answer is obviously yes, that's what this video is about. Here it is. Hero Quest game system, high adventure in a world of magic. And yeah, pretty much the same um, art, just redrawn and in a different style. 
I do not envy the artist who had to do this because they basically knew they had to take one of the most iconic pieces of fantasy art and just redraw it and nobody would be happy with it. But there we go. I think what has happened here is that the art assets in some way belonged still to Games Workshop because everything has been redrawn. And I mean everything. So, going into this, there's something you need to know, which is that the American version of Hero Quest had slightly different rules to the uh, UK and I believe the rest of Europe edition. We should refer to them as US and European versions. So the European versions were exactly as I described earlier, obviously. The USA version, slightly more difficult. Basically, some of the um, enemy characters have more than one hit point, whereas in the original EU version, every enemy character only has one hit point, except I think for like a couple of very special NPCs. So basically, as soon as you hit an enemy, it dies. That's it. The American version, oh no, it is much tougher. Also, they've made all the um, uh, actual quests tougher with more monsters and things in them. Uh, there's chaos spells for the um, sort of evil sorcerer character, which is interesting. That was something that wasn't in the um, EU versions. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. They also weirdly renamed the sort of evil overlord character from Morkar to Zargon. I do not know why that is. Maybe there was a politician called Morkar in America at the time or something. I've got absolutely no idea. Uh, and I think that is about it. Um, oh, well, in the book there was a different first quest. Um, we had a thing over here called The Maze, which was quite a big sort of... basically a big map but without that many enemies in, so it's to kind of sort of draw you in without there being a massive risky character being killed or something. Whereas in the American version, they had something called the Trial, which was really bloody difficult as the first level, which seems really odd. However, dun -dun 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 -dun, I've got here the maze, as thus demonstrated from the quest book from a British version. And here is the trial as the first one from a quest book for the British version. So later versions of the game, even in the EU, etc., had uh, the trial as the first one. Oh, there we are. That's a completely pointless piece of information for you. But I discovered that when I was building my own classic Hero Quest set because it was too bloody expensive to buy normally. So I just got loads of different cheapy banged up versions off eBay and, and sort of combined them eventually. Even doing that is expensive now. The prices have gone crazy easy as it has with a lot of old game stuff, both video and board game and otherwise. But anyway, let us compare and contrast the two versions, because let's face it, as they pretty much are going to play the same, very much the same if you uh, are used to the American version, it's all about what it looks like, isn't it? So, the cover, I mean it ain't as good as Les Edwards one, I mean there's, you know, you can't really expect that, um, but they've gone for this slightly, slightly more cartoony look to the characters, not so much the backgrounds and the zombies and things. One thing I don't like, see it's all fine, it's all fine, absolutely fine, I've got no problem with it, but they've gone really anime on the elf. <laughs> the elf is like super anime for some reason. It looks like it's escaped from an advert for one of those um, Korean MMOs that you sometimes see, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Don't quite know what all that's about because nothing else in the whole thing seems particularly anime, but there we go, um, such as it is. Uh, also, the elf uh, is now female, the standard uh, piece for it, whereas all the other characters are still male, which is nice. You don't want your daughters growing up not knowing how to go down in a dungeon and kill zombies and orcs. That would be no good to anybody. They must be prepared for the world correctly. And in fact, if you pre-ordered this over here, or indeed um, did the sort of weird, vaguely crowdfunding-y version they had in America, you get extra miniatures um, giving you a female barbarian, a female wizard, a female dwarf, and a male elf, so you can just pick as you see fit. So that's good, but we'll show you those later, because right now we're looking at a board. So yeah, here's the old board, here's the new board. Gotta say, pretty bloody good. They've kept all the nice bright colours and everything looks pretty much the same. It's all good. Purists will be pleased to hear that character sheets are still on a big old pad. Oh yes. And look, they've now got other things on. You can mark your gold coins. There wasn't a space for gold on here, which is really stupid because that's a major resource in the game. You've now got space for gold coins, potions and other items. Again, you have to make note of those in the back or something. Body points, you now have a little grid to go through, weapons, armour. And how many attack and defend dice they've got at any one time, which again is a useful thing to take uh, note of because it can change depending on the equipment the characters have. Um, and the starting points as well, because 
it's useful to know the starting points for certain things and certain spells and stuff. And there we are. That's all nice, isn't it? Dice are exactly the same, just with different artwork, as we would expect. You've got your skull, and you've got your white shield, and you've got your evil dark shield, and it's all fairly apparent. Cards have nice artwork on the back, still look if anything nicer artwork it's all gone sort of more um, oil painting you now look at this stuff i'm not entirely convinced about the ones on the face to be fair you've got your monster cards still they're all sort of more modern and dramatic as opposed to the sort of more laid back board gamey versions of the original but uh, these are just kind of generally the same things redrawn um you know, and, and not quite as good overall. Most of them are pretty fine, actually. Um, none of them, I would say, are bad by any stretch of the imagination. But it is that thing of somebody's just had to redraw all of somebody else's art, which is hardly um, the most jolly task, but they've done a decent job. Everything is in place, everything is still clear, and at the end of the day, that's the most bloody important thing, isn't it? You need to know what you're doing. Uh, tell you what I did like as a really nice addition to the cards. Wait for it. Whoop. We'll get on to those in a second. Look, a little card for each player, with a nice logo on the back. Tells you what you do on each turn, just to remind you. Find this sort of stuff really useful for people learning the game. So, 10 points for that. Excellent stuff. And instead of the big old character cards from the original, you now have a standard card, just to remind you what uh, the different classes are. Your barbarian, your dwarf, your elf. I mean, how anime is that? Now, we're going to hit another problem with the design that I don't like here. The wizard. The wizard looked fine on the cover. But he look at the design of the wizard there. He's sort of gone from some sort of just a bloke who's good at magic who's gone down to kill some orcs to somebody who has escaped from a dating sim. What's that one where you date dads, dream daddy or whatever? <laughs> that really looks like a character from that, doesn't he? Um, whereas sort of the barbarian and the dwarf. Yeah, still sort of look at the fancy part where suddenly we've got anime and dating sim for these ones. They look like they're from a very different type of game, but uh, fair enough. You don't see them that often. We'll let them off and the miniatures are fine. We'll get onto the miniatures in a minute. I know that's what you're all waiting for. One major change is that all the furniture is now entirely plastic and generally quite weighty plastic at that. There are no more partially cardboard pieces. Um, also, the little skulls and rats no longer um, attached to the top which is a shame. So when I move that up so you can see the detail due to the lighting, they fall off, but not really a problem in the game itself. Um, yeah, I... Th this is... I mean, it's good from a design point of view, because, I mean, that table looks weird, and that table looks kind of great, so that's all fine. Uh, the doors also are no longer in any way cardboardy. I should swap those around. Keep it consistent which side the new one's on. Old on the left, new on the right. See, the only thing is, though, not as bright. Um, doesn't matter so much for things like the doors, maybe? I don't know, because you've got a kind of stone door, so maybe that's not so good. They're basically, as none of these are painted, they're not going to be as bright as the cardboard printing. Of course, maybe you're going to paint the pieces yourself, and good bloody luck to you. You'll be there for the rest of your life. But hell, you'll probably have a good-looking set at the end of it. Unless you're bad at painting. And you also have the mighty screen still, which you put up to stop the players cheating and looking at the map while they're playing the game. Very nice art on this. I do like it a lot, but I'm afraid the old one will always have a special place in my heart. And apparently on my sofa. Anyway, enough of this. Let's look in hideous attention to detail at every single miniature from the new Hero Quest and how they stack up to the ones from the old Hero Quest. Let us begin by looking at the Barbarian and Dwarf heroes. And as you can see, the Barbarian's in a similar sort of pose, the Dwarf is in a more dynamic pose, and is always a, actually an odd pose for the Dwarf in the original, I thought, because he's kind of just standing there, as the others all have sort of battle-ready kind of stances going on. It's like he was late up and has only just arrived or something. Um, but it's exactly as you'd expect, really. The more modern ones have uh, much busier and more detailed designs than the sort of simple lines of the old Hammer stuff. And I think I do love the old designs more, but how much of that is nostalgia talking? I don't know. I really don't bloody know. Um, and they're pretty much the same colour. I know that the Hero Quest ones here are a much brighter colour, but um, that's just the sort of later sets. The early Hero Quest sets, like I had at the time, were a far darker red and far more in keeping with the uh, new ones you see here. The Mighty Wizards and the Nimble Elf. 
Um, yeah, the wizard is... It looks less Dream Daddy dating in this version, so I'm quite pleased with that. Plus, very weird pose on the old Hero Quest wizard. And the old Hero Quest wizard staff always looked a little bit too much like a copper pipe for my liking. So, quite enjoying the new one there. The elf design... No. I, I like the old Hero Quest elf in that it was like an elf just sort of dressed up in fairly standard garb. It didn't have any crazy sort of elf accoutrements. Whereas this one, yeah, it's gone very much the other way and indeed full anime, which I'm not entirely down with because it just doesn't seem to fit anything else particularly. But there you go. It's the weakest of the Eviltons you will find in the dungeons, the Goblins. Now, as I said before, the uh, original miniatures all basically had the same figures, but with different weapons in the hand, as you can see here. We have Goblin with a scimitar thing, Goblin with a spiky sword, and Goblin with an axe. Whereas in the new one, we have ooh, Stalking Goblin running up to give you a smack with his cleaver thing. Sort of defensive goblin, holding you at bay with his tiny little sword, and Lady Goblin, with twin daggers pointing downwards. Um, yeah, I, I really do like that the modern ones have the different poses and stuff, as opposed to keeping them all the same. It's all a little bit more. It's less board gamey, but more RPG, I suppose? <laughs> Is that right? But it's what people expect these days, isn't it? It's also really nice to have the female ones in there to mix things up a bit so they don't all look the bloody same. Also, mix up the lines, like the one that left's got a hat, one in the middle hasn't. All nice, all nice. The dreaded orcs. Now, the orcs, of course, one of the most iconic of the old hammer designs, so they've had to drastically change them. Not just face-wise, but uh, pretty much in the entire way their bodies are set up. So they're far more mm, Tolkien-y, I suppose, as opposed to the um, old Games Workshop ones. But yeah, you can see here old orc with scimitar again with a notch taken out for some reason curved swords always had a notch taken out of them in the old stuff and a meat cleaver and then we've got here stalky orc coming up with his axe to uh, embed it in your back and ready for battle orc looks like he's having a bit of a laugh at you the big orky bastard but wait there are so many orcs i've actually had to split this one into two there we have Spiked Flail and or Morningstar orc and another orc with a slightly smaller scimitar without a notch out of it and shouty lady orc getting ready for battle or possibly just won a battle who can tell and very ready to take you on and destroy you with her massive weird sword cleaver thing lady orc on the end now this does show us a bit of a problem the big spiked mace thing very similar of uh, or very reminiscent of sort of sauron's thing from uh, lord of the rings there have a look at it it's all bloody bent up i mean you get this a bit in board game stuff but it does show you it's very bloody wobbly this stuff and what i don't like about it is once you've wobbled it look it's gone white at the top um means it's sort of stressing it not a massive fan of the plastic they made these from it feels a little bit i mean it's, it's picked up the detail well i mean as you can see there i mean these are very nice and all that but mm, not entirely convinced by the longevity of these especially because they're kept very very snug in the boxes in some of those plastic things they click into and you can sort of damage them getting them out if you're not careful but there we go whereas these old ones they may be brittle but they're of a design where uh, everything is in its place exactly and well actually if you play with them too much the weapons snap off so let's not get too much into that and finally, the biggest of the green pieces in the original Hero Quest, the Fimir, I think it's uh, pronounced F-I-M-I-R. Only one type of miniature for these with a big double axe, and it's like a big reptilian thing with a spiky tail with a big thing on it it can smack you over with. Basically, they're quite hard. Now, I don't know if the Fimir are like a specific Games Workshop thing because they've been entirely replaced with the Abominations, which are sort of half man, half fish things. Um, as you can see there with a vaguely stand... Well, it's one of those sort of semi-trident things. They always give aquatic creatures in fantasy scenarios. So, yeah, it's completely different. I mean, they look cool enough. I personally prefer the big lizard thing to the um, semi-Lovecraftian... Ooh, he's got a bit of the Innsmouth look about him, hasn't he? ...thing on the right, but it is still pretty cool. And it's more threatening because it's much larger. So, uh, yeah, I can get that. Um, but it's interesting they had to replace that entirely. And now the undead... The creatures that didn't even have the decency when killed to stay killed. Now, the classic Hero Quest skeleton, you get four of them, they all look the same. They've all got the big old scythes there, and they've stuck with the scythe for the new ones. They've now got a bit of armour on them. 
but overall pretty much the same thing. It's a very basic and quite chunky skeleton design for the Hero Quest one, whereas they've obviously given it a bit more to the armour and stuff for the new one. Makes sense. Don't know why their scythes are so badly designed. Look how thin it is where it connects to the stick. I mean, that's just going to make it break off. You're never going to do any reaping with that. Ah, the zombies. Hero Quest one's given a massive cleaver weapon, which is really not going to do much good. Whereas the new one's given a sword and a shield, and a far more sort of mocking dead kind of look to them. Um, the new one's far more emaciated and less of them there, whereas they're quite freshly rotting, I think, the Hero Quest ones. And both of them feature feet turned inwards in that classic zombie pose, so that's always nice. And the most powerful of the standard undead in the game, the mummies. Um, a lot more to the new ones with a more sort of undead, yeah, clear your eyes out pose, where it's more of a come on mate, bring it on bro, go on, go on, I'll take you down, sort of thing to the mummies on the left. However, I do much prefer the old Hero Quest mummies because they look a lot stronger. This one looks like if you gave it a good belt with a stick or something, it would just collapse and that would be the end of it. Whereas this is quite a chunk. Oh, hang on. I'll just use the other hand so you can actually see. Uh, this is a right chunky one and looks a bit sort of buff and it looks like it would be much more trouble in the fight. Basically, the one on the right looks like the sort of thing that might poison you which isn't a thing that happens in Hero Quest, whereas the one on the left looks like something that beat the shit out of you, which totally is a thing that happens in Hero Quest. And now, the Forces of Chaos, beginning with the Chaos Warrior. Well, I say Forces of Chaos, that seems to be a Warhammer concept, because that is missing from Hero Quest. They are now known as Dread Warriors, the ones on the right there, whereas, of course, it is the Chaos Warriors, for the classics on the left. Always... A bit of an odd pose. The Hero Quest Chaos Warrior looks like he's posing for some sort of um, chaos calendar or something. <laughs> I mean, go on, look hard, mate. Hold your axe like that. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, you're not holding it by the right bib. It's fine. It's only for a calendar. Yay. Love the design of all the, well, sort of, I wouldn't say simple. It's a bit fluted and stuff, the armor, but um, yeah, very chunky, very menacing. Whereas the new one ugh, is a bit over designed, if you ask me too many wibbly bits, too many little bits of bobs and it's all sort of broken up the outline of it a bit too much. But I think what kills the new one for me actually is the head. The helmet looks like it's falling off or something, it looks like it's broken its own neck or the head isn't attached properly or something. They're all like it, it's, it's not like a problem with this, how it's designed, but very odd. I much prefer the old Chaos in this one. Ah, the mighty Chaos Sorcerer and the stand-in for the Witch Lord in the original Hero Quest quests. Yeah, um, I gotta say, it seems to be based on a lich or that kind of sort of undead wizardy thing, but the old Hero Quest one very much going for that Skeletor vibe of like a giant bodybuilder's body with a skull on top. Also, we talk about weird poses in some of the original Hero Quest stuff. This is probably the weirdest. I mean, I think he's supposed to be channeling power or shooting magic or something, but to know just looks like he wants a hug mm. whereas the new one is a far sort of thinner and more magic-y looking creature with its staff and obviously very very rotten body um yeah i totally see where they've gone with this one it makes perfect sense and finally the fearsome gargoyle the hardest and biggest bastard in all the dungeons with his weird whip and his weird serrated sword now i knew there was gonna be major changes going on here because it does seem to be a statue of a great demon of corn as i think we said before so um mm, yeah it was going to change do like the way they've changed it. They've gone from more sort of traditional gargoyle, not that over-designed, a little bit spiky, but not too bad. Gone for the serrated sword still, and they've replaced the whip with an axe, which kind of makes sense. And I've got to be honest, as much as I love the original design's massive hat and stuff, I never liked the way its, bo its head was kind of coming out of its torso. I think it's supposed to be bending its neck down, but I don't know. Always looked a bit odd to me, whereas you haven't got that in the new one. But... As fearsome as the new one looks, it does not look as fearsome as the old one. And I think when it's the most powerful miniature on the board, pretty much, that is an important thing. But I do quite like both of them, so fair enough. Ha! <laughs> I've just realised something. This is an abomination. This is a gargoyle. There's a reference for you. So, briefly mentioned expansion packs earlier, but yeah, that was totally a thing for Hero Quest. Your basic two, and by far the most widespread, were Killer's Keep and Return of the Witch Lord, which I very excitedly bought with my Christmas money. And frankly, we were massively bloody disappointed. There are no new monsters or anything in them, just a few new bits of cardboard and some new quest maps, and that's really a lot. But wait, 
Surely a big box like these has miniatures in, you say? Oh yeah, it does. But it's just the miniatures already in the game. You just get another set of the same sprues, basically. To the extent that, even with this Witchlord one, you get a load of these extra skulls, which don't do anything. The reason you have the skulls is because they were just on the sprue, on the same sprue as when you bought Hero Quest. We were very disappointed with these. Fortunately, they did bring out some really excellent ones later on. Uh, there's Against the Ogre Horde, which brings in um, ogres and stuff like that. There's Wizards of Morkar, which brings in evil wizardy things. Also, in the, across the expansions, you got like um, hirelings, as in like mercenaries who could come along with you and stuff. It was all far more exciting. There were also two other expansions only released in America uh, Frozen Horror and The Mirror Wizard? Mage of the Mirrors? Something like that. Wish I'd looked that up before I made the video, but hey, you couldn't buy them over here. But they're pretty cool, and interestingly, they also came with female versions of the Barbarian and the Elf characters, so that's a little bit extra something in it, which is rather nifty. But overall, most of these expansions, and I mean, these still go for a fair bit of money these days, not so great. It was only the sort of rarer, later ones that were good, and they go for a bloody fortune on eBay. I do not have them, I cannot show you them, but they did exist. Jump cut, because we were just talking about disappointing expansions and oh my word, I remembered this existed. Those may have been disappointing, this was just a bit crap, frankly. The Hero Quest Adventure Design Kit. Not a game in itself. Yep, really cool new artwork on the cover, and that's pretty much all that's cool about it. So, for six quid, which is the equivalent of about £14 these days, uh, not an exact science, uh, your home is at risk if you do not keep up repayments on a mortgage or other loan secured on it. Um, yeah, all you got was a couple of bloody cheapy books. This really was unimpressive. I mean, there's a reason I got this like 18 months ago free and it's completely unused. Put it that way. It just came with something else. Okay, <clears throat> here's an advert for Hero Quest. You know, what you will obviously already own if you're buying the Adventure Design Kit for it. There are four lots of stickers all the little beasties and all the furnitures and stuff for you to stick in the adventure design booklet which gives you some hints on making scenarios and then some more blank maps exactly as featured in the middle of the quest book that you get with hero quest already so if you had a photocopier or something you're already well away if not get yourself some graph paper because this isn't going to last that long they only give you four no was it five no it's four sets of sh yeah four sets of stickers and five blank maps. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five. That's it for your money. Great, thanks. The most interesting thing is this massively bigger but redesigned character sheet, which now features equipment and treasure, which is still pretty bloody important and was missed off the original. Also, it still doesn't actually feature gold. I suppose you'd put that under treasure, but ah, slightly irritating. And there you go. That was considered crap at the time, and I tell you what, it hasn't got any better over the years. The rule of thumb to remember on original Hero Quest is first two expansions, NAF, Adventure Design Kit, crap, Against the Ogre Horde, and Wizards of Morkar, kinda great. And also, there was a late in the day reissue of Hero Quest that included some of the extra miniatures, although repurposed as The Dark Company, and it was called Hero Quest Advanced Quest, and it came with like an extra quest book of super difficult stuff using these new miniatures. Look, here it is now! But yes, the first two expansions are also available in the new style and came with the mythic tier thing, which I think is what they called the um, sort of high level crowdfunding thing in America. Whereas here, we just had to pre-order it from a company called Zavi, who seem to be the ones who sell the more obscure Hasbro stuff in this country. If you are ever wondering about buying them separately, again, unless you pick them up cheap, I wouldn't bother. It's just kind of more of the same miniatures and just the same enemies over again. And you could probably have more fun by just designing your own adventures. I mean, they're not, they're, they're quite well designed, these ones. They're not not fun or anything, but for the money, mm, mm, I don't know. But a far more interest to me than those old expansions reborn is the extra box in the Mythic tier. Ooh! you got some cardboard and extra counters and stuff, and these are for the extra quests. But not just one extra quest line, three! Three whole books of extra bloody quests, look! 
full on quests with all your new maps and stuff. That's an awful lot. That's basically one book more than both of those expansions bloody combined. You've got the Crypt of Perpetual Darkness, where a dragon feels really stupid for not having any lights fitted in its labyrinth. The Spirit Queen's Torment. Don't know what spirit? Gin, maybe? Woman who drinks too much gin feels tormented. I know the feeling. And the Prophecy of Taylor. I am Taylor. My prophecy states that NFTs will be a good investment. Don't forget the two follow-up quests, the bankruptcy of Taylor and the divorce of Taylor. Anyway, the extras you got in the Mythic tier bonus box. I've got no idea if these will be available to purchase again in the future. They're basically what you got if you sort of crowdfunded it in America or just bought it from Zavi in the UK, like, which is what I did. Uh, uh, I've just realised something. About 18 months ago or something, I got an email from like the board game people saying, um, oh, we see you really like Hero Quest. We'll send you an exclusive Hero Quest thing before the game comes out. They never did. So I won't be showing you that because I don't know what it is. But I do know what these are. These are basically female versions of the Dwarf Hero, the Barbarian Hero, and the Wizard Hero. And I said those in the wrong order. It's the Barbarian on the left and the Dwarf in the middle, obviously. And yeah, perfectly well done. Very similar poses to the other ones. The Wizard is very similar, actually. And unless you were to paint them and actually put the beard more visible on the male version, it does just kind of look exactly like the Wizard with boobs, which is fair enough, really. Um, yeah, it's all pretty standard, as those would expect. And the anime elf lets the side down again. <laughs> <laughs> because the male anime elf, which is in the middle, looks far too similar to the female one on the left, really. It's just, you, you may as well have not bothered. Just, if you just hadn't given the female elf the boob armour, you could have just said it was just like a androgynous one that could be used for any gender, or indeed non-binary elves. But no, you've got two that look almost the same, so great. And on the right... Hero Quest veterans will probably guess that that is Sir Ragnar, who you rescue in sort of the first proper quest in the rule book. It's, and he appears on the board, but you don't really have a piece to actually um, represent him. I think you have to use a goblin or something. Makes a lot more sense for him to actually have his own miniature. It's nice to see an official miniature of Sir Ragnar at last. There have been various ones you could people have designed you could 3D print over the years. And I'll be honest, I think I like them all more than this one. This one's got this sort of... He's been in there a long time, and he's got wild and crazy hair and beard and all that kind of stuff going on. Which is okay, but I didn't get the impression he was in the dungeons quite that long. Maybe that's just his style. Who knows? And now, the very interesting bit of the Mythic tier, the extra heroes you can play as, with full rules and cards and everything. Um, although... I'm still not entirely sure how some of them work. They they don't seem to have had uh, quite the playtesting, the stuff in the Mythic tier box that the main box has. There's a few sort of questions over some of the rules, but overall, pretty bloody good, really. On the left, we have the Warlock, who is a little, I don't know, more dwarf person? I can't tell. But tell you what I can tell. They turn into horrible demon things and attack using a magic wand from a distance and stuff. All quite interesting. And on the right is the druid, who also transforms into a sort of beast form. Um, there are no miniatures for the alternate forms, incidentally, but it um, doesn't really matter. You know what your pieces are, I suppose. And more to the point, they're very different to play as, as the main ones. So that's nice, adding a bit of extra to your game. And the other new class they've added, the bard. And I absolutely love the design of the bard. As if bards weren't annoying enough, this one is an orc that seems to specialise in singing rather than playing an instrument, which is fantastic. <laughs> I absolutely love that. Um, yep, you've got your bard, who does his magic -y song things, as one would expect. And on the right is basically... Uh, I don't really know... It's, it's kind of an alternate um, piece for the wizard, basically. Just if you want the wizard to look like an old guy holding... A book with very elaborate robes. I think the piece is actually based on Mentor, who in Hero Quest lore is kind of the um, the leader of the good guys, the one who sort of tells all the barbarians that where to go off and what to do next and that kind of stuff. Sort of the tutorial man, that kind of thing. If this was Buffy the Vampire Slayer, he would be Giles. Also, the art 
for the bard is absolutely glorious. Just have a look at that. <laughs> you can hear the party members saying, oh god, he's off again, but his songs keep us alive! Now, the rest of the miniatures in the Mythic tier box are mostly different poses and sort of different sculpts for existing monsters. So it's not boring stuff like in the two expansion boxes where you just get the same miniatures. Again, these are actually fresh. As you can see, we have Grasping Abomination in the centre, a little goblin with his little spikes to stick in your legs on the right, and on the left, an ogre with a massive crushing hammer. Or maul, I believe, in RPG terminology. Meanwhile, over with the shambling undead, we've got a skeleton which is very much hiding behind a fairly substantial shield, and an all-new zombie that's going to whack you with a sword that has definitely seen better days. In fact, it'll probably do more damage through tetanus and the rust on it than it will from actual impact. And now that we have Lady Zombie, we have Lady Mummy to go with it as well. Still looking a little bit non-beefy for my taste of the stats, but that is a pretty good looking image. I think I prefer that to the um, main mummy from the main set there. And, oh, look at that. I think that may be the Witch Lord finally getting their own proper miniature. Basically, yeah, beefed up version of the Cow Sorcerer, which makes sense. Also, very intricate staff there. Must have took ages to carve that out of obsidian or whatever and for the chaos sorry dread forces we've got one of the warriors except this time instead of a big mace thing they've got well a sword quite obviously looks suspiciously like he-man's sword from he-man the master of the universe and again a big old shield they had that before i much prefer this sculpt the head looks i was not going to say the head looks perfect but it looks much more attached and also an alternate chaos sorcerer or whatever they're called in the new one there um i think a female lich basically um it's hard to tell when all their flesh is rotted off and we also have this quite eye-pleasing alternate gargoyle here who doesn't have any weapons you'll notice nope he's more demonic and he's gonna beat the crap out of you in the old-fashioned style but it's not just existing monsters, there is now an added dragon. There he is sitting on his column and looking like he's about to breathe fire in your face and totally ruin your weekend. And as you can see by the barbarian next to him for scale, that is a big old monster. I am going to assume that the gargoyle is no longer the biggest baddest dude in the dungeon. So earlier I touched on 3D printing and stuff. I have one of those there 3D printers and I actually did 3D print two different versions of a female barbarian for Hero Quest because I was playing it with my girlfriend over lockdown and she wanted to play as a barbarian character. So I did female versions. I did this one, which is quite similar to the original Hero Quest one. Um, these are all from heroforge.com, which is a uh, sort of site where you can customize um, little 3D miniatures and then get the file to print them or get them to print them for you if you want, actually, um, which is all right. But we much prefer this one, which is the one she ended up using, which is kind of based on the female barbarian from one of the original Hero Quest expansions. But yeah, in the new style, obviously, it's all a bit different. I was going for the more old hammer look, which the Hero Forge stuff really, really fits in with. I I think um obviously i had to do some customization for the base there because uh, obviously they don't come with hero quest style bases but i think that came out pretty well i'm quite happy with it do you know what while we're on the subject of 3d printing if you just fancied new miniatures for your hero quest there's all different people making at the moment my favorites uh, if you go on my mini factory which is a website and look up something called print your monsters and look up something called monstrous encounters i'll link it in the uh, description below there is a very talented person who has done new versions of all the hero quest characters and they look great and like multiple versions of the main character so you've got like well i, I haven't printed any of his properly yet. i've got this test print here of one of the barbarian styles and as you can see it's in the style of the barbarian off the cover so they've got like um all the different um poses like they are on the cover of the actual game box as opposed to the standard ones it's all very good but if you're not in 3d printing that probably won't help you a lot so there we are that is the all new hero quest show and if you do fancy like playing hero quest again there's pretty much no other way to do it unless you want to spend an absolute goddamn fortune on ebay trying to get one of the original sets this is the way to go um the i don't think you can get all the interesting mythic tier stuff anymore sorry about that 
I've teased you with it now, but um, you can definitely buy the standard board game, which is going to be available early next year, I believe, for a hundred pounds, which is a lot of bloody money. The original was like twenty pounds at the time, which is the equivalent. I mean, this thing never properly scales up, does it? But roughly the equivalent of like fifty-five pounds now. So, it's a lot of money, but it is after your nostalgia bone, um, and it is a really good game to get the kids into. And frankly, the American rules, which make it slightly harder do seem to make it a bit more of a game. It was a little bit too easy back in the day, and now it kind of isn't. So that's all good. But do remember... Oh, hang on, what's that? Oh, that's all right, it was just something stuck to it. I thought a big chunk of the paint had come off. I was going to cry for a week. Um, yeah, do remember, it's a simple game. Um, you're not going to play it with all your mates who are in their 40s necessarily and have as much fun as you used to with it. You know, if you are after that, look for something like Descent, Journeys in the Dark. You can pick that up for around £70-ish um, when I last checked, and that is, like, a really, really good game. But Hero Quest is, if you want something to play with a family, cannot be beat for this kind of thing, I don't think, anyway. It's just a shame that it's such a chunk of money, because £100 is a bloody lot of money. Even when you're talking board game money, £100 is a lot, unless you're getting massive boxes of stuff with all the expansions. But it does come with a shed load of miniatures, and it's all very tactile and visual, as we said. So, you know, it's going to get the kids more interested than something that's just flat counters on a board. So if you can afford it, prepare to pick up your broadsword and carve down the minions of evil. Until you get the battle axe, because the battle axe is four damage dice, whereas the broadsword's only three. So, you know, it's going to be better going forward. Come, fly, boy, boy.